Hi, I want to talk to you about diabetes, but this time around about complications. Somebody walks to the doctor and tells him or her, tell me more about possible complications. There's what we call microvascular complications. And I'll start with diabetes retinopathy. This is the leading cause of blindness in diabetic patients. As a matter of fact, it is the commonest cause of blindness in North America. The clinical future of diabetes retinopathy could be viewed on ophthalmoscope. And the appropriate thing to do is to refer to ophthalmologist. However, some diabetic patients do come down with cataracts. That's just a lens opacity. That is non-vascular. Nephropathy is the common cause of renal failure. What we do here is albumin to creatinine ratio every one year. The investigation will start after five years of diagnosis if it is type 1 diabetes related. While in type 2, it starts immediately. And in both type 1 and type 2, it depends the test albumin to creatinine ratio every year. We can prevent further damage to the nephrons by stopping all neurotoxic mess. Cause consultation with the pharmacist will help. We can use cardio renal protective medications like agitacin combating enzyme inhibitor and if there is allergy to them we use agitantin receptor blockers. For example, Ramipri could be used, but then you need to watch the BP. However, it is not that because AC inhibitor or ARB is good in hypertensive patients, we use it even if there is no hypertension in diabetes uh, nephropathy or in all diabetic patients just to prevent further damage to the cardiovascular and renal system. All we need to do is make sure the BP is not too low because AC inhibitor can bring down the blood pressure. And it is mandatory that the BP in diabetic patient is actually kept at 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury or below. Neuropathy, on the other hand, we have some culprits. And here we have subvitor and the rise level of subitor will make neuropathy to be worsened and actually make it difficult to be treated. If myoinositol is low, the situation is bad also. There's possibility of excess advanced glycation and uh, the end products of the excess advanced glycation like lipids and proteins that have become glycated after exposure to glucose will make the situation worse. If they are, they, they are the number of excess advanced glycation end products, the worse the neuropathy. Oxidation and protein C will all determine how this situation will be. And nerve growth factors will be lowered 
when all these factors are present. Neuropathy will present like paresthesia, tingling and itching, neuropathic pain. In fact, this is a debilitating situation. I've seen a patient that was craving for anything that could relieve the pain by enemies. And that is why some of them will become opioid dependent and even addicted. There's possibility of localized pain like radiculopathy, numbness, low sensation, low tactile sense to, uh, perception. Carpal tunnel syndrome is possible and neuropathic foods is possible. At the same time, best policy could be in diabetic patients. How do we examine this type of people? We do what we call foot examination that involves general examination of this patient. Um, we do pervular vascular disease examination and that will also involve neural, sensory, lighter, sharp and dull. For perception, be done and vibration sense using tuning forks as one two eight hertz will be good and of course monofilament have been manufactured for this purpose and there will be video in future where all these things will be demonstrated There's a condition called diabetic mellitus amyotrophy. In this situation, there'll be pain, there'll be weakness, there'll be wasting of hip flexors and extensors, and the individual will feel very, very uncomfortable and present. And another condition is autonomic dysfunction, where there'll be alternate constipation and nocturnal diarrhea. There will be erectile dysfunction and urinary retention. Tachycardia and postural hypertension. When all these things are present, it is autonomic dysfunction, secondary to diabetic mellitus. Erectile dysfunction in men it's a serious issue. You have to address it because of stability of families. Alternate constipation and nocturnal diarrhea, and of course, urinary retention, like a cardiac and postural hypertension that is exposed to falls. That should be addressed appropriately. How do we treat this horrible neuropathic? Pain. Tricyclic antidepressants like amitriptyline or tritriline could be used, but you have to be careful because of the side effects. Nortritiline is good in elderly, and amitriptyline is commonly selected also. Serotonin, so norepinephrine, reuptake in bitter like dulocetine, that is in butter, could be used. Anticonvulsants, Tegretol is carbamazepine. Carbamazepine was actually manufactured for hepatic neuralgia. Neurontin or Lyrica are useful here. Votrin cream or capsaicin on the skin and you have to address rate dysfunction and give the man either Cialis Viagra or the Vitra but make sure the BP is not too low 
and there is no situation in this man that could treat him to hypertension and then you give this medication on top of it, the patient might die from that. Erythromycin. To treat long-standing diabetic mellitus patient, if you suspect autonomic neuropathy because it increases gastric emptying if constipated. So if the patient is having autonomic neuropathy, and he or she comes down with constipation as a result of that. And on top of that, there is any kind of bacteria infection sensitive to macrolides. Then you should use erythromycin because erythromycin will do two jobs at the same time here. We'll take care of the bacteria and then increase gastric emptying, relieving the constipation. You can use domparidol and metoclopramine, as the case may be. So thank you for listening to my presentation and watching all my videos. Subscribe to my channel so that you can get this pieces of info on a timely basis. Thank you, I appreciate it.